good morning starting a brand new day today we are in this this lovely van because we only have two small pallets not not really a lot of anything um to be delivered today one of them is uh for 7 a.m the other one is just whenever i get there so we're getting situated i am actually was in the process of moving all my stuff around getting everything where i needed to go um that's really not gonna stay there but i have my cup of coffee from the office because you know the office gives us gives us coffee and uh yeah so um this is one of those cases i was saying about the other day i get in a truck and this message pops up fuel low almost on empty i mean it is like right there by the e but it doesn't matter because I would have topped off and filled off anyway. So, uh, so yeah. So, really no big deal. I'm going to, we're about to get on the road. I'm going to get my stuff going, clear these windows, uh, get organized, and I'm going to take off. All right, now that I'm a little bit more awake, because you got my water cup, uh, my water cup there. I actually drink some of my coffee. Can't talk today. Um... One thing I want to mention about, like, if you're in a van load like this, so, for one thing, it'll be a little bit quicker. You can kind of get off the mark a little bit quicker. Um, you can go a little faster. But the the big thing is if you have cold, you have dry ice. And if you have dry ice, dry ice eats the oxygen. So you leave a little crack in the windows. And these are powered windows, so, you know, leave a little crack in the windows. And that'll allow oxygen back into the vehicle. Um, you can also use your vent and the AC, but I like keeping it cold. You don't have to do both windows. You can just do the passenger side. So if it's like raining, see like right now, I got my paperwork really sitting on the seat. I should use this cubby that's above here like I do in the truck. and Probably what I'm going to do. Not in here often, so I'm learning about where the new, where this stuff is. When I'm unload. I got one order that's all the way in the back by that back door and one by the side door. So I can get to either one easily. When I unload, that's what I do is open up the back door and 9 out of 10, if you got a van run, you're breaking it down and giving it to them. But, I mean, seriously, look how much we got. Like, that's that's not gonna, gonna hurt anything. Anyway, as I showed earlier, the fuel gauge is on E. So, I am here at the truck stop getting fuel. And while I'm at it, I am going to get something to eat for breakfast. Uh, something very interesting with fuel here is uh, you'll notice you have to open the driver door to get to the fuel. And I believe that is so that people can't siphon your gas because they can't get the tank open. So, it's a feature. Uh, anyway, that's it for now. So, unfortunately, I can't close my door while fueling. But, over here at this stop, just like we do at any other stop, I'm going to wash my windows because I need to be able to see. And I'm actually gonna do these these lights too because they are looking bad. So correction, I will not be getting anything here to uh, eat. But interesting uh, thing that just happened. So I go to go inside, and uh, earlier they had vehicle here. I go to go inside, and the door's locked. So I'm like, well, crap, they're closed. Like that's this is a 24-hour truck stop, you know. So uh, apparently not anymore. I go back and since I can't get my receipt because my receipt's inside, that was part of the reason I was going in was because I needed to get a receipt and the, the, the terminal told me inside. So I go back and I just take a picture of the the miles and uh, the gallons and the price so that way I can at least have that. And all of a sudden I see a girl in the window and she's waving me down. I go over there and there's like this little kiosk. It's a little kiosk on the side with a doorbell a little bitty window where you can like just get your hand and she explains to me she says you know it's crazy they, they have to i'm guessing they're doing i thought it was for covid maybe it is but it for security that's state troops office right next to it so uh let's see get that out of first gear um so yeah so i'm like you know guessing that they're doing that for, for security but uh anyway she tells me she says between 5 a.m because it's not quite 5 yet it's 4 40. she said between 5 a.m 
and uh, 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. That door is locked. And the door is locked between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. But if you need them, they will actually come to the door to get what you need or whatever you need help with. So in this case, they got me my receipt. Um, I don't know if they'll bring food out to you or something like that. I don't think they do that. But like they needed the receipt. Uh, I needed the receipt. They got me the receipt. So if we're going to uh, get something to snack on this morning, we're, we're just going to have to get someplace else. So we're officially on the highway. I mean, it is 4.40 in the morning. I know that's going to be hard to see. It's uh, 4.40 in the morning. We're officially on the road. So uh, early like this, you might see some chicken lights. But that's really it. And we're headed to, looks like Lafitte first. And we're going to catch Parody on the back end. Because Lafitte just needs to be there in the morning. And Parody's asking for seven. It'd be really weird if they sent me out. You know, two hours early to get somewhere that's a half hour away. Oh, we'll see. Well, the sun's coming up. I really did not uh, film much on the way over here, just mainly because it was so dark. Uh, probably could have got away with the expressway because all the lights and all there is pretty well lit up. But heading down to uh, Lafitte, Jean Lafitte which you know, to the side water dock there to, to offload which is pretty much i mean they have a small community here you know, uh fishing camps and all whatever you get towards the, the bottom towards the south end of the road but uh then you'll just run into one of two docks they got here it's just at the end of the road so um yeah that's really where i'm headed now and this is what I'm on. It's just this it's a little back road, two lane. Um, guess there's not a whole lot to see. Again, you'll see how these. Look at these houses, see? Up on stilts. We know what that means. You know you're getting close to water when you see that. A museum. But yeah, you know you're getting close to water whenever you've seen the, the buildings start uh, climbing up in the air. That means it's going to flood, or that it does flood. You're, you're here. A little boat, I guess, for decoration. Check up board legs. We're definitely uh, in the right area. That is Simcoe. And they got some, some deck up boarders sitting there at Simcoe. I think I'm just like seven miles down left to go before I get to my actual stop. That's pretty cool. I don't know what that little, little house was. It almost looked like a little chicken house doghouse decoration I, I really not sure what that was about there's the water tower and palm trees here Cajun Bahamas right So 
here reaching the end of the road which is going to be where the tidewater dock is not going to be very far the lower Lafitte playground of this uh, stretch. So the thing about the bayou in Louisiana, I guess that try to help some people out. Uh, a lot of people think that under New Orleans is nothing but water. You gotta you gotta take your fishing boat and swim to your to your house. And in reality, there is a lot, a lot of land, obviously, and uh, a lot of land that's that's on the water because it's not. A flat bottom it's not like running along a beach that is just a you know single flat deal um, Louisiana at the bottom of Louisiana because of the way that the rivers and all were and because of the way that everything was built it's fingers it's literally fingers that come down so you'll have Venice is on one long finger and then next to it where we are is Lafitte that's on another finger and then you'll have Grand Isle and Fouchon that's on a finger Cocodri is on a finger Dulac's on a finger Dulor so all along the Gulf Coast is the stretches of fingers that don't connect there's water in between them but it's still a lot of land and that's where these docks and all that's where these boats come in from the Gulf and, and hook up and that's that's how this uh, happens. So, all right, so we're at the Feed Harbor. Uh, Tidewater Dock, I can see it on a little bit of sound right there. Tidewater Dock, but home of the Seaway Marina, voted number one in the feet. So, um, yeah, there's you know, fishing boats and all come out of here. Obviously, water fish. But yeah, the, these offshore boats is come out of the Gulf. They, they're coming to all these. And when I tell you all of them, I mean all of them. They're coming. That was a hell of a pothole. Good Lord. They're coming to all of these little fingers. And um, getting all their supplies and their equipment and all. And then going back out based off of whatever's closest to them in the Gulf itself. So. Alright, so we are here. We have reached the end of the road, and as I mentioned, uh, the one of two docks here. And I think there's another dock over there, and this is tide water here. Um, so I'm gonna go wake somebody up, find somebody, and and try to get uh try to get offloaded, and we'll, we'll see what we gotta do to get these uh, groceries off. All right. So we are on our way to our next stop. It is 619, so we did pretty dang good. Um, got here, called the yard. He uh, told me where to pull it. Two guys came out and said, uh, you know, you got groceries for for this order? I said, yes, I do. And uh, they came offload the back, signed my paperwork. Call it a day, let's roll. I can see dark clouds that are wanting to become weather as of right this moment it's actually a pretty nice day out it's not very hot it's not raining at the moment um, but if you look off in the distance I see some gray out there I, oh, sorry I get my mirror out of the way I see some gray that looks like that could eventually become rain you know what I'm saying like that could become something so um so yeah definitely uh hoping that it stays clear now granted that is not a very big area of gray like it turns clear all the way around it it's like just one massive gray cloud and everything else is clean and pretty and bright and sunshine um i look across and i see these these cloud formations up here and uh they look like mountains We're supposed to be getting some weather in. 
there there is some weather in the Gulf right now this weekend is supposed to be kind of weathery and next weekend so I don't know it kind of ruined my plans my plans was this 4th of July weekend and I got fireworks and I wanted to go blow some stuff up I'm still gonna probably most likely take the kids if there's a break in the weather and the weather is like how do I explain that well? Because you have microclimates, and you know when they say 80% chance of rain, then yes, there is a very good likely chance that it is going to rain, and it's, and it's probably likely where you're at. But what they don't tell you is that it's 80% chance that it's going to rain at two o'clock, and then by five o'clock it'll all be gone. I mean, yeah, granted, that day you can pretty much get an hourly, but they can't forecast that well that far out. So, um, that's why it's kind of like, you know, it'd be great to know, hey, yeah, evening would be clear. But I know we're going to have some, it's not going to just pour down all the time. So we're going to have some spots that's going to end up being time that we can go do that. And even if it's just for a little while, I, mean, I, don't, I, I don't even have much. It's just a few things, but... Literally, I bought this for New Year's, and we wound up not being able to do it for New Year's. So, it was like no biggie, you know? We got 4th of July. That's going to be the big one. We'll get a few more things, and we'll do 4th of July. And I'm wanting to do it for 4th of July. I mean, it's getting ridiculous. It's getting ridiculous, man. just want to blow something up. I uh, went check out one of the shops today that's right by the office. They put a tent up right in front of the office. And... Um, so yesterday I went went check out the shop and I've been hearing you know, I watch stuff I watch Cody B and all and uh, I've been hearing that uh, Cody B Pyrotechnics that there's been a shortage uh, they having trouble getting certain things and some of the popular things and the truckloads are costing way more and you know just a just a bunch of nightmare stories about it so I went just to kind of test out the waters and see what they had and. You know, they had the the one that's right there, and I kind of found this last time, they they deal primarily with brothers. They do have some other brands, they do have some other stuff, but honestly, they primarily deal in brothers fireworks. And they had some good stuff. Like, they had some that, some really good effects. I did go back and research them. And they had some good stuff, but they only had the 500 gram cakes, they, they really only had like the big stuff they had the 500 gram cakes and the expensive stuff now they had some some other stuff that wasn't you know super expensive but I'm not sure about those things I'd have to look and, and kind of research those but they didn't have any any 200 gram cakes at all I just just to point that out you know uh, they had one of them that was this thing was like 200 bucks it was called Comet Apocalypse. Now granted, this is a show. This is like a show in a box. I watched a video on that, and if I had that kind of money to burn, Right, yeah, definitely I would do that. That would be, that you set that up and you put that out and you got a show, at least for a little while, you have a show that uh, you and the kids, hey, St. Anthony, gotta show that. Uh, but yeah, you have a show that uh, that the kids can enjoy. So, you know, kinda gotta give and take on that one. But, I think I'm gonna take what I have. I may go look at a couple of other places and get one or two more things but I'm really not buying a lot this this time around I'm not buying much at all um, kind of trying to save up got some goals in mind and just, just trying to stack some money on the side because I'm going to need it to, to fill those goals so but yep that that is the the ultimate plan of what's going on right now that car has that is really weird i don't know what's up with that that car has names all over it uh, i went into the fire station so it might be firefighters names names of people that have died i don't know some kind of monument but that that was 
that car was just, it was a black car and it was just white lettering all over. And it was, when I got close enough to see it, it was names, people's names. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that could be pulled into a fire station. It could be firefighters' names. It could be 9-11, something like that. So, this is actually a really nice area. So, this bridge right here. That's gonna go over that waterway. Um, that is. There's a name to the bridge. Anyway, uh, what I was gonna say is that is my official sign that I am leaving the town of Jean Lafitte. A little welcome center, a little sign to tell you about the town of Jean Lafitte. I'm not reading all that and I'm not stopping to take pictures. Sorry. Pleased to be. But uh, that is a sign that I am leaving Jean Lafitte and headed towards Barataria thanks for visiting Jean Lafitte headed towards Barataria then I'm gonna end up in uh, West Bank of New Orleans so west we go um, Avondale and I'm just gonna travel down 90 till we get back to Paradis get to Paradis uh, around the Zalmond is where my next stop is and we're gonna go ahead and get that offloaded and the speed limit jumps up to 55 55 double nickel rolling 55 Double nickel, make a dime. Alright. So, almost to the peak of the bridge. I'll try to get an over the side view. We'll see. Alright, now you just see trees if you look over the side. But let's, uh, let's get that view. Boats tied up right there. That's one coming down the water. But the other side, a little fishing boat over there, a little bass boat. All right. That's that one over. If you see in the background, you see those buildings back there, it's going to be kind of hard to see. I don't know if I can zoom in too well. Nah. Uh, that was that was rough to try to zoom in. Uh, yeah, that's the New Orleans Central Business District, District, also known as the CBD. So, yep. We are off the bridge, speed limit 55, we're rolling 55, that's the side of the road, so I'm going to leave it from here as I keep on making my way down the road. So we are on uh, Barataria Boulevard, and this is, you know, absolutely we have hit the traffic. Up ahead, about two miles, is uh, going to be the expressway which we're going to be on that for like half a mile. The expressway, to explain it, yeah, I guess they call the whole thing the expressway, but the expressway is a raised bridge area that goes over a lot of the metropolitan area on this side and uh, speed limit on at 65 and you can... Uh, you know, it takes you to the the Greater New Orleans Bridge. Do you know if you're going that way, going into the CBD? But then coming back the other way, um, it brings you down to like into West We Go and into those areas um, right before you're going into Avondale before you get back to to Tulane. But um, I'm not really gonna film it just because I mean if you look at traffic right now. And it doesn't seem that bad, but believe me, it's uh, three cars wide and it's pretty thick. And I actually have cars going around me, like doubling the speed limit here. But uh, traffic congestion and the way that people drive so aggressively in this area is the reason why I won't film the expressway. Maybe one day whenever I have like a mount, put it on a dash or something like that, I can do that. But um, yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna film that because I need to 
give it pretty much all my concentration, honestly. So uh, the speed limit will drop down to 35. I need to get into this left lane, I do believe. Um, and then you can see that bridge up ahead. You may see some cars coming off of it or going, going across it fast. That is indeed the expressway. And that is where it is that we're headed. And we will be going left on the expressway. So. Well, I am completely offloaded. See my empties back there. Um, I got over here. I didn't record much. I was actually on the phone with my wife whenever I drove up. So uh, it is a nice area. I'm actually going to drive it. Uh, record it driving out. I wasn't even sure if I was in the right place. And that's how it goes with this job sometimes. You make a turn and it's like you trust it. That it should be around here somewhere. But it was like houses in the middle of the woods kind of area along a bayou and then boom all of a sudden here is this this train tracks and gravel road and and I'm here with signs all over so I was able to uh get there and it was for the dispatch office itself so he was happy we just went ahead and you know offloaded those couple little items for him no more it was a small very small order like you put in your fridge at home like you put in your college fridge at home really I'm gonna go ahead and uh, record this drive out of here and y'all will see what I'm talking about whatever I tell you it's like almost feels like you're in the, you're lost enjoyed that we did have the trip that we went to Lafitte we came back and hit parody saw some pretty interesting places uh, talked a bit so what you didn't see which is gonna come in the next video is after I got back and I left for the house they called me up and asked me to go back on the road in the opposite direction to intercoastal city so that is gonna be another video uh, same day that that was recorded so I'm gonna try to put these out about the same time and see how soon I can get that done but I hope you enjoyed it as always like comment subscribe catch you on the flip side <laughs>